Welcome to Saturday Crafter Noons. I'm your host, Leah. And I'm Samir. And today we have a very special guest. Today we have artist Petra Floyd. Woo! Yeah! How are you doing, Petra? I'm all right. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's a okay, nice yeah. rainy day. Yeah, this, this guy looks pretty tired. What's this? He's feeling a little tired. Is this your friend? Um, we met here at Assemble, actually. And, uh, yeah, they helped me out with um, putting together my craft canoe project. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, do, does your friend have a name? I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah. Cool. What What do they go by here? What do you... Orangutan. Yeah, just orangutan. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Just chill. Be like Tangy for short. Tangy? What's up, Tangy? <laughs> tangy. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, we have a couple questions okay. for you today before we um, move ahead to your workshop. Mm -hmm. um, Leah, do you want to start with a question? Yes. So I know we've been getting into the fall spirit, and I recently bought some pumpkins. So I was thinking about the difference between like vegetables and fruits and all of that. So mm -hmm. if you were a fruit or a vegetable, what mm -hmm. would you be and why? Ooh. You know what I like a lot? Um, those ramps. You know what they are? They look, they're like, oh no, like fiddleheads. That's what yeah. I'm thinking about, fiddleheads. And then they come out of the ground and they go, ooh, like that. <laughs> they're really tasty when you saute them with some butter and garlic. I don't think I've ever seen those before. They're really good. Huh. I, I feel like I've seen them sprout. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we saw them at the garden. Sometimes they show up at a farmer's market. There's like a window of time. And you're uh, like, oh my god, I have to buy these. Oh, so it's a seasonal? I, I feel like it's a seasonal thing. thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I kind of like that seasonal. aspect about it too, that yeah. it's seasonal. I feel like I'm seasonal sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not always going to get me. <laughs> not always. Not always. Not I just always recently good. found out that Brussels sprouts were grown on a like large branch. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I found out at the farmer's market. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a lot of good stuff there. I was, in, I was amazed when I first saw that. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Brussels sprouts. So. <laughs> The, actually, the, when I first saw that, it reminded me of uh, this percussion instrument. It's like a shaker, and uh -huh. it has like bells mm. where the Brussels sprouts would be, basically. Oh. And you would just shake it like that. It's like a period instrument. That sounds really good. Yeah. It'd be like a vegetable yeah. orchestra. Vegetable <laughs> yeah. oil. I love oh, that. Maybe we should do that soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a shaker squash. Um, you have, um, what else? Corn, corn, you'd be like, ah, ah, and make. That's little scratchy sounds. Thinking it. some sort of like eggplant, like drum, uh -huh. or xylophone. <laughs> For sure, oh, yeah. xylophone. I've seen people make like carrot recorders and mm -hmm. flutes. Ooh, really cool. yeah. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Very fun. All right, could be our project coming up. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. we'll stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, did you have a question too? Yeah. Um, well, so speaking of pumpkins, mm -hmm. um, what? emotion would you carve into your jacket? Oh, ha. do I want an aspirational emotion? <laughs> or do I want to reflect, does, does my jack o' lantern reflect what's deep inside me? That's a, mm. that's like how I'm thinking about this question. Um, how does my jack o' lantern feel about fall? Um, you know, my jack o' lantern might be a little confused. Confused? A little confused. Because it's been warm, it was warm, really warm yesterday, mm -hmm. and today it's cold and rainy. Mm -hmm. So my head's a little like, like you can't see my face because of my mask. <laughs> but like a little like squiggly mouth, you know, <laughs> and like eyes are like, <laughs> like that. Or like one of those like a uh, zigzag mouth. Exactly, like that emoji. Yeah, oh, okay. that was my jack o' lantern. And he's like, what? What's going on? Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for yeah joining us. Um, we're gonna jump into Petra's workshop now. Let's go do it. All right. Ooh. Hey, um, my name is Petra, and um, welcome to my afternoon. Um, I'm out here in a beautiful uh, Friendship Garfield neighborhood, and we're gonna walk to one of my favorite community gardens. Remember to look both ways before crossing the street.
really wonderful walk and we're here at the octopus garden um, that's because it's an octopus in this garden and I'll show you where it is Wow, what a wonderful walk in the neighborhood. We're back at Assemble, and I found some really wonderful materials here that remind me of the things I liked about the garden. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what we have. And some of these things will be in your kit. So I really love all the wonderful colors and textures on the octopus, of course, um, but also other things in the garden. So I found these little things here. <laughs> these little bendy things here, these pipe cleaners. And they reminded me of the stems of the plants. They also reminded me of some of the colors of the plants that I saw, like the marigolds um, and some of the tomatoes. So I think this will be really inspirational. I also found uh, crepe paper over here. And I found some other things with textures, like this tool over here. And I think that'll make some really you know, interesting uh, features and shapes as I lay out my backdrop. Um, the backdrop you can think of as something that's flat or something that has like textures and varies in levels, right? That can make something that's interesting for the eye to see when you're, um, when you're recording on top of it or when you are taking a picture of it to use elsewhere, right? I also found um, these little pieces of material, some are fabric, some other things. And I'm thinking about the mosaic of the octopus. Right? I loved how the different pieces of tile in the mosaic caught the light in different ways. So I think that if I have these different pieces of material, it'll make something that's visually interesting like that too. I have some yarn here. Look at this huge big ball of yarn, right? So I can make things like lines and outlines and shapes on my backdrop. I have some big pieces of fabric that I can use to just lay down and make big, colorful shapes in my backdrop, right? And this is a way to sort of really quickly fill up an area with color. And then I also have, and these will be in your kit too, I have these crayons, these like big crayons. And so if I'm using something like poster board, right, I can just use these crayons to draw my backdrop, right? So you have all these different ways to create a really interesting image and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's do this. All right, so I am laying down my fabric, thinking about the beautiful colors that I saw in the garden. We have, uh, ooh, this yellow fabric that had flowers on it, perfect. I've got some different types of green, right? You don't want all the same green. There's all kinds of greens in a garden. Dropping in some sky, maybe. And I'm twisting the fabric around. Yeah, and Tangy's out here helping me have a sense of scale um, because I can't always lay down and see what I look like when I'm making this background, right? So Tangy's there to sort of give me a sense of like how big the background is relative to my body. Tangy's pretty big. We're almost the same size. I'm playing with some pipe cleaners right now. I'm trying to make some flowers, maybe some vegetables. And I've got this tool and it's kind of like this net like fabric. And with this crepe paper, I'm shaping it and just figuring out what can I do with it? Sometimes you just have to play with the material and the material will tell you what to do with it, right? You can have an idea of course, but then you have to play with it in your hands. What else have I got here? Ooh, more fabric. And did you see what I did there? I took my fabric and I twisted it around and made it into a flower and put it on top of my crepe paper. I had no idea I was going to do that till I was literally playing with the materials in my hand. And then I'm taking some of this white tool, tools like this net-like fabric, right? Which is really great because it's kind of transparent, but when you overlap it with each other, it gets like wispy, kind of looks like clouds, right? So that was really, 
a nice discovery to make. And the yarn too. The yarn's kind of fuzzy like a cloud, but I didn't use it to make the actual cloud, I used it to make the outline for the cloud. And I just like looped it on itself to make my cloud outline. And, oh, here I go. Oh, this is one of my favorite discoveries. So I found this metallic leopard print paper here at Assemble. And I was like, I'm gonna use this to make a bumblebee. So I did. And so I cut out some stripes out of felt and laid it on top of this. What's really great about working this way is that you don't need any glue or anything. You're just taking fabric and materials like paper, whatever, and you're just laying on top of each other. And if you don't like what it looks like, you can just re rearrange it or fix it. It's not permanent. Yeah, and also the orange flower that's over there, those are some pants that Leah, <laughs> that Leah gave me. So I twisted them up and made them into a flower and put that on top of the crepe paper. Now I'm trying to make wings for my bee, and I realize I cut out shapes that are too small, or I will realize that. And I was having some trouble cutting it. Felt is kind of hard to cut, so I needed um, sharper scissors, right? You see, that, that wing is too small for that big bee. So Leah helped me find sharper scissors and figure out like how we could cut wings out, right? So I cut the wings into a teardrop shape or a raindrop shape and I put one behind the B, and now I'm cutting out my other one. And you could use your first raindrop to trace the second raindrop, right? So you know what size it needs to be to match. And I got my wing there, and I'm trying out my backdrop. I loved this project. It was so fun. I didn't exactly make what I saw at the garden, but I worked with what I was inspired by and what I had on hand. And I have a challenge for you all. So you've made this backdrop, now you have to make the character that goes in the backdrop. So I challenge you to come up with a costume that allows you to be a character inside this fantastical world you just made. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Saturday Crafternoon. We would love to see what you've created. To do so, please share by posting on our Facebook page, tagging us on Instagram, at assemblepgh or email me at my email leah at assemblepgh.org and if you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go